biological warfare of a different type. One of the big killers in war throughout history, especially pre-1940s, was not what you might expect. It was not the ever-increasing genius and lethality of weapons. It was disease. Plague, dysentery, tuberculosis, typhus, and other infections were amongst the big killers. The medical sciences had just not figured out some of the simple things we now understand. Germ theory was a fringe idea, and the need for sanitary conditions and proper waste disposal. Having anything to do with the survival of the troops was scoffed at as preposterous. And for the doctors and surgeons, the blood on their aprons and coats were a badge of honor. These were seldom, if ever, laundered. Though it was obvious to most that some illnesses were contagious, how illness could devastate an army before its enemy could just wasn't understood. But it was laughable to some that keeping things clean had any real benefit. Thus, for centuries, the reality of death from disease remained as much a part of a soldier's expectation as was being wounded in battle. Death was everywhere. The Killer, Typhus Medical science advanced, and during World War II, the understanding of how death could come from illness was better understood, and greatly feared by German soldiers. Many of those who had survived the First World War had witnessed the decimation of their brothers-in-arms by plague and typhus, as often as by bombs and bullets. Most would rather take a bullet. Typhus, for example, would spread like wildfire for a few weeks before anyone even felt sick. And then, the agony of the scourge of this sickness was already destined to cause great suffering, with symptoms such as coughing, confusion, seizures, neurological impairment, loss of kidney function, and death. As soon as there was any sign of typhus, tents, bedding, and clothing were burned in an attempt to kill the fleas that infected the soldiers. Soldiers were isolated and watched for symptoms, and many suffered and died never having engaged in battle. During World War I, typhus had decimated entire units of the German military. But the disease had not been seen for 25 or more years. So now, during World War II, the younger German troops had no immunity to it, and the veterans greatly feared it. For this reason, any time someone was reported to have typhus, trepidation was ignited in every soldier, and they would do most anything they had to do to avoid exposure. The Typhus Savior? In 1939, Dr. Eugene Lasowski, a Polish physician, had just finished medical school and was a lieutenant in his country's military. The Germans had just conquered Poland with their Blitzkrieg invasion, and he was captured and placed in a POW camp, from which he promptly escaped. Simultaneously, Typhus was taking the lives of 750 people every day in Poland. The Red Cross was doing everything they could to help the victims and refugees of war. Dr. Lazowski, now 26 years old, was hiding in plain sight, working with the Red Cross in Roswato. Having escaped there with his little family, they were doing their best to help others and to survive themselves. The Jewish ghettos were well established at this time, and though the need was great, the Nazis would not allow the Jews to receive medical care from outside the ghettos. The typhus for them, again, was a common killer, along with many other diseases. If there was a breakout of typhus amongst the Jews, the Nazis would shoot them on the spot and leave them lay, and then the home and the belongings were burned. Conversely, there was no quick execution for the non-Jewish Poles. They were quarantined until the disease ran its course, and they either survived or they didn't. 
Noticing this difference in the Nazis' treatment of victims of typhus, Dr. Lazowski and a colleague from medical school, Dr. Matulowicz, realized they might have an opportunity, and maybe they might save some lives. A sudden outbreak of typhus. Lazowski and Matulowicz had learned a little secret, one that was not well known in the medical community as a whole. They had found that by injecting individuals with a dead strain of the typhus virus, they would then test positive for the disease, but never get sick. Though quite risky to attempt, they chose to use this knowledge to their advantage. Suddenly, 12 villages in the area were taken by the scourge of typhus and one household or another had to be quarantined. Using the dead virus trick, Eugene Lozowski was able to keep the Nazis out of these 12 villages, which included a mix of ethnic Poles and Jews as well. The villagers were coached on how to look sick in the right way at the right time, just in case one of the Nazis was brave enough to go and try to see for himself. The Germans did send soldiers looking for detailed reports concerning the ongoing spate of typhus in these 12 villages. The soldiers, afraid of the disease, were happy to be wined and dined and heavily liquored up by the doctors. Then, the next day, they were given a report from the doctors and sent back to the superiors, in many cases never having set foot in the villages. By 1944, the Nazis were starting to catch on they knew something was up in those 12 villages. And just in case something went wrong, Dr. Lazowski always carried his cyanide pills to give him an escape if it was needed. The Allied forces were advancing quickly and the war in Poland was effectively over. The Germans had fled Poland and no longer cared about how they were apparently being lied to in Roswato. The efforts of Dr. Lazowski saved the people of 12 villages from being used as slaves or being sent to concentration camps and tortured or killed. After the war was over, Dr. Lazowski continued to live in Poland in silence about his activities during the war. The politics of the time, however, caused him to fear he would be punished or executed for his subterfuge. So he said nothing. In 1958, Eugene Lazowski was able to emigrate with his family to Chicago. It was then he finally felt safe enough to share his story. His activities were detailed in a memoir titled Private War, Memoirs of a Doctor Soldier, 1933 to 1944. You might want to read it, but it's written like a medical textbook. We'll put a link in the description. So. What does an obscure story about a Polish doctor in World War II have to do with anything today? Well, there truly are many little outsized nuggets of wisdom to be found in this heroic story, but might I suggest for now we focus on just this one. It can be difficult to go against the grain with the powers that be and the flow of a society, in this day, it seems pretty probable that if you express the wrong opinion, you will quickly pay the price for your honesty. There are many whose grip on status, power, and prestige are apparently easily threatened by something as simple as a politely offered opposing opinion. And these will enthusiastically react and retaliate, especially when their favorite cause of the moment is threatened by common sense. Never trust the integrity of such people. You could try to explain or clarify, but sometimes all you can do is hunker down and wait for the assault to pass. You do not have to be a martyr. So here's the answer. There may be a price to pay for the right of being honest with yourself and doing the right thing. But if you surrender that right, are you still free? And that's it. 
an ounce submitted for your consideration. Hope you enjoyed this little tale, and if you did, why not take just a second longer and subscribe to the channel, give us a like, or share it with your friends. It helps us to grow, we really appreciate it, because we've got to convince the algorithms out there that we're worth watching, right? <laughs> Thanks.